friends, Miss Cassie here with Solon Public Library's Digital Storytime. This week, we're going to read stories about how it's okay to make mistakes. But first, we need to sing our welcome song, and we need to get our clapping hands ready. So we're going to wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast, and put them on our knees. All right, here we go. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. All right, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. All right, what do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, twirl around. All right, for our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can. And we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray. Hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray. Our theme song this month is Yes, I Can Do That. And we have four verses with four different actions. The first verse, can I try a new thing? We go like this. We're asking a question. Can I? Can I try a new thing? The second verse, can I do better and try again? Try again. Try again. Just like that. Can I say sorry when I'm wrong? We're going to rub our chest just like this. Sorry. And then, can I take a deep breath? <sighs> okay, here we go. Can I try a new thing, a new thing, a new thing? Can I try a new thing? Yes, I can do that. Can I do better and try again, try again, try again? Can I do better and try again? Yes, I can do that. Can I say sorry when I'm wrong, when I'm wrong, when I'm wrong? Can I say sorry when I'm wrong? Yes, I can do that. Can I take a deep breath? A deep breath, a deep breath, can I take a deep breath, yes I can do that, yay! Our first book today is called Ruthie and the Not So Teeny Tiny Lie. And it's written and illustrated by Laura Rankin. Hmm, do you know what a lie is? A lie is when you say something that is not true. Like, I didn't give my broccoli to the dog, even when you did. <laughs> That's not the truth, right? So let's find out about Ruthie's. Not so teeny tiny lie. Ruthie loved tiny things. The tinier, the better. Her toys were the teeniest imaginable. She had dinky dinosaurs, itty bitty trains, ponies no bigger than your pinky, and teddy bears that were barely there. 
And look, there she is playing with her teeny tiny toys. Ruthie loved finding tiny treasures too. At the beach, she searched for the smallest seashells. The flowers she picked were no bigger than fairy wings. She even had an eggshell from a hummingbird. Those are so tiny. And wherever Ruthie went, she carried some teeny thing in her pocket. And look, do you see what she's doing on the bus? She's reading a teeny tiny book. One day at recess, after jump rope and swings, Ruthie took a turn on the twirling bar. When she landed, she saw something in the grass. It was a little box with a teensy window and an even tinier button on top. She could not believe her luck. It was a teeny tiny camera. <sighs> Remember, Ruthie loves finding teeny tiny things. Ruthie looked through its little window. Then she pressed the button on top to take a picture. <gasps> Click, just like a real camera. This was absolutely the best thing Ruthie had ever found. And it was hers. Click, click, click. She tried it out every which way. Say cheese clouds. Click. Say cheese little bug. Click. Say cheese school. Click. Say cheese Martin. Click. But Martin didn't say cheese. Martin said, hey, that's my camera. Uh oh. Ruthie was startled. No, it's not. It's mine. Give it to me, said Martin. It's mine. No, it's not. It is too. No, it's not, shouted Ruthie, and she raced back to class. Uh oh. Do you think the camera belongs to Ruthie or to Martin? Ruthie did find it on the ground, but how do you think it got there? What's going on? asked Mrs. Olson. Ruthie's got my camera, cried Martin. I got it for my birthday and I dropped it on the playground. But Ruthie wanted that teeny tiny camera in the worst way. It's mine, she yelled. I got it for my birthday. Well, that wasn't true at all. Not one teeny tiny bit. Right? Ruthie didn't get it for her birthday. She found it on the playground. And Martin says he lost his tank teeny tiny camera on the playground. Hmm. Mrs. Olson looked at Martin, and she looked at Ruthie. Goodness, this is a problem, she said. The camera can't belong to both of you. I'll keep it safe in my desk drawer for now. Let's talk about it again tomorrow. Ruthie's stomach flip-flopped the rest of the day. She couldn't remember the answer to 2 plus 2, and when Mrs. Olson read a story, every word flew straight out the window. How do you think Ruthie is feeling right now? Maybe sad because she doesn't have the teeny tiny camera anymore. Maybe embarrassed because she knows that she told a lie to her teacher. Maybe angry because if Martin hadn't said anything, she would have gotten to keep the little teeny tiny camera and she wouldn't have known that it belonged to him. Yeah, I think she's feeling a lot of feelings. Later that night, Ruthie sat in bed and cried. What's the matter? asked Mama. So Ruthie told Mama and Papa the whole story. What do you think went wrong? asked Papa. I said it was my camera cried Ruthie, but it's not. It's going to be okay, said Papa. You made a mistake, and tomorrow 
you can fix it. I think Mrs. Olten, Olson and Martin will understand. Right? Telling a lie was a mistake, but Ruthie can still fix it. But the next morning, Ruthie could barely eat. Maybe Mrs. Olson wouldn't understand. Maybe Ruthie would have to sit in the time out corner. Maybe Martin would never talk to her again. Maybe no one would ever talk to her again. Not one teeny tiny word. <sighs> the school bell was about to ring. Ruthie took a deep breath <sighs> and began the long walk to the front of the room. Mrs. Olson's desk seemed very far away. How do you think Ruthie is feeling today? I think scared. Do you think she's scared? Yeah, she's scared that she's gonna get in trouble. She's scared that her friends won't wanna be her friends anymore. She's scared to tell her teacher, right? She's maybe a little embarrassed to tell her teacher that she lied yesterday. Good morning, Ruthie, said Mrs. Olson. I have something to tell you, said Ruthie in a very small voice. The camera isn't mine. I didn't get it for my birthday. I found it on the playground. Mrs. Olson didn't make her sit in the timeout corner. She didn't even look mad. Instead, she gave Ruthie a hug and kissed the top of her head. Thank you for telling me the truth, said Mrs. Olson. That took a lot of courage. Do you know what courage is? Courage is being brave. And being brave means doing something even when you're a little scared, like Ruthie was. She was scared to tell her teacher what had happened. But she was scared and brave, both of those together. And look, it turned out okay. I'm very sorry, Martin, said Ruthie. And look, she's giving him his camera back. It's okay, said Martin. And all at once, Ruthie's stomach stopped flip-flopping. She even skipped a little on the way back to her desk. How do you think Ruthie's feeling now? She looks happy to me. Does she look happy to you? Yeah, and maybe a little relieved that the scary things she was afraid were going to happen didn't happen. And she doesn't feel guilty anymore because she felt guilty before that she had taken something that didn't belong to her, even though she didn't know it belonged to somebody else at first. Ruthie got the right answer in 3 plus 7 in math, and after lunch, Mrs. Olson read the funniest story Ruthie had ever heard. And on the short bus ride home, Ruthie realized she didn't miss the teeny tiny camera. Not one teeny tiny bit. In our story, Ruthie showed that she knew how to be a good friend. Because being a good friend doesn't mean that you never make mistakes or you never hurt your friend's feelings, but it does mean that you say sorry when you've made a mistake and hurt your friend's feelings. So we're going to sing Friend of Mine, <laughs> and we're going to do some actions. The first one is clapping. You know this one. The next one, we're going to tap our nose. And then we're going to shrug our shoulders like this. Get them up high and down. And then we're going to smile big. Will you be a friend of mine? Friend of mine? Friend of mine? Will you be a friend of mine? And clap along with me. There we go. Will you be a friend of mine? Friend of mine? friend of mine. Will you be a friend of mine and tap your nose with me? Will you be a friend of mine? Friend of mine? Friend of mine? Will you be a friend of mine and shrug your shoulders with me? There you go. Get them up high. 
Will you be a friend of mine? Friend of mine, friend of mine. Will you be a friend of mine and smile big with me? Thanks for being my friend, friends. <laughs> In the spirit of friendship, I have some famous friends from stories here on my board. Now let's talk about each of these friends, and then we're going to mix them up and try to reunite our friends. So first we have Frog and Toad. You might recognize them from the Frog and Toad Adventures. We also have Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street. And we have Winnie the Pooh and Piglet too from Winnie the Pooh stories. We've got Elephant and Piggy. Elephant is also known as Gerald and Piggy just Piggy for some reason. And we've got the man in the yellow hat and Curious George. They get into a lot of trouble, don't they? Well, George gets into a lot of trouble and the man in the yellow hat has to rescue him. All right, I'm going to mix up our friend pairs and I need you to help me put them back together. So take a look. This is who goes together. Okay. All right, look, our friends are all mixed up. Whose friend do we want to try to find first? Why don't, let's see, who is this friend? That's right, this is Toad. Let's try to find Toad's friend first. Who is friends with Toad? Is Toad friends with Piggy? No. Is Toad friends with the man in the yellow hat? No. Is Toad friends with Frog? Yeah! Frog and Toad are friends. In fact, I think that's the name of one of their stories. Frog and Toad are friends. All right. Whose friend should we look for next? How about the man in the yellow hat? Who is friends with the man in the yellow hat? Is it Ernie? No. Is it Winnie the Pooh? No. Is it Curious George? It is. Curious George and the man in the yellow hat are friends. Okay, let's see. Whose friend should we find next? How about Bert's friend? Here we go. We've got our friend Bert. Who is Bert friends with? Is Bert friends with Piglet? No, he's not friends with Piglet. Is he friends with Piggy? No, he's not friends with Piggy. Is he friends with Ernie? Yes. Bert is friends with Ernie. All right, let's see. Whose friend should we find next? How about this one, Piglet? Let's try to find Piglet's friend. Now, let's see. Is Piglet friends with Piggy? They're both pigs, but they're not friends. Is Piglet friends with Gerald? No, Piglet's not friends with Gerald. Is Piglet friends with Winnie the Pooh? Yes, Piglet is friends with Winnie the Pooh. All right, and we just have two friends left. We have our friend Gerald and our friend Piggy. Are Gerald and Piggy friends? Yes. In fact, Gerald and Piggy are best friends, aren't they? <laughs> Thanks for helping me reunite our friends. Good job. 
All right, friends, our last book today is called It's Okay to Make Mistakes. And it's written and illustrated by Todd Parr. Now, Todd Parr has written a lot of picture books, and they are all great. So if you have never read any Todd Parr books before, I highly recommend them. And we have quite a few here at the library that you can borrow. It's okay if you spill your milk. Uh-oh. You can always clean it up. And look, the dog and cat are helping. It's okay to try a different direction. Uh-oh. You might discover something new. It's okay to not know the answer. Eight plus three. Do you know what eight plus three is? Uh-oh. Asking questions helps you learn. It's okay to get upset. Your friends are there to cheer you on. Right? Oh, look, that soccer player, she looks so angry that she messed up and missed the goal. But that's okay, because she has friends that she can practice with. It's okay to fall down. Uh-oh. Look, that friend fell off a horse. Ouch! Have you ever done that? It's a long way to fall. But you can always get back up. It's okay to wear two different colored socks. Uh-oh. Others might try it too. It's okay to forget your umbrella. You might meet someone new. Look, our duck has made a new friend who has an umbrella. It's okay to change your mind. Look, that elephant friend is at the top of the diving board and he's feeling a little nervous. Everyone is ready at a different time. So look, what did our elephant friend do? Yeah, he changed his mind and he got ice cream instead. <laughs> That's okay. Have you ever gotten on a diving board or went to jump off um, someplace high into the water? It can be really scary. And sometimes people kind of pressure you. They really want you to do it. But you don't have to do it unless you want to. Things that are fun for some people are not fun for other people, right? It's okay to get mixed up. Uh-oh, what's going on with our friend here? Yeah, their shoelaces are all tangled. You can always ask for help. Oh, look, everything got sorted out. It's okay if you are clumsy. Uh-oh, what happened with our penguin friend? Yeah, she tripped and slid into the water. You might invent a new move. Look, everyone else thinks it's cool, and they want to slide headfirst into the water too. <laughs> it's okay to get dirty. Look, those friends look like they're having a lot of fun in the mud in the rain outside, don't they? A bubble bath is also lots of fun. It's okay to be shy. Look, all those dogs are howling. Oh, oh. And that cat is thinking, uh oh. But being quiet can make you a good listener. And look, the cat can hear the owl. Hoot, hoot. It's okay to color outside the lines. It's good to follow your own path. Everyone has uh-oh moments. That is how you learn. It's okay to make mistakes sometimes. Everyone does, even grown-ups. 
That is how we all learn. The end. Love, Todd. I love this book because, friends, it is okay to make mistakes. We all make mistakes, even Miss Cassie. I make mistakes, too. But that's how we learn and we get better, and it's how we help each other. So, friends, remember, it's okay to make mistakes. It is the end of our story time this week, friends, which means it's time for our goodbye song. We read a book, and we played a game, and we sang a song together. We read a book, and we played a game, we had Sing a 